Hello and welcome to Chart of the Day Cafe for Thursday, August 10th, 2017. Just want to read our disclaimer quickly. Trading stocks is a high level of risk and viewers should complete their own due diligence on any stock or underlying that they intend to own. 100% of the content of this video and communique is intended for journalistic and educational purposes only. This video and all indicators, strategies, and articles herein should not be construed as investment advice, not making any recommendations always for your further homework. Good morning, Sue here. Hope you've had a good week so far. Been an interesting one in the markets. They're getting a little wonky. So with that, let's get into today's video. Regular viewers will know, we always start our videos off with a look at the Russell Index. I use the Russell as my simple proxy in these videos because I want to keep them as short as I possibly can. And I so I say to myself, let's pick one index to use as our guide. And for me, the Russell makes the most sense. And that's just my personal choice. My reasoning being that the Russell uh, is probably the index that might be most rate sensitive in that they are uh, younger companies. They're not as mature as the ones in the S&P and the Dow, and so they might be more inclined to borrow, get, making them more rate sensitive and um, more subject to price sensitivity overall. So that's why I choose the Russell. But in today's video, if it's okay with you, I'm going to spin around and take some extra time to look around at a few other uh, ETFs and indexes to see where we're at because things are getting kind of interesting. So we're looking at the five-year monthly chart of the Russell Index and uh, for this we use the IWM which is the ETF that represents the Russell 2000. We're stepping back to take a look at it on a five-year monthly time frame. We've been keeping an eye on this wedge. Oh my gosh I'm so tired of talking about this wedge. <laughs> So we have long-term support resistance down here with our blue line. We have medium term with this orange line here, which is really just an area. And then this black line that runs this way. And then on in Tuesday's video, we drew in this more minor area of uh, short-term support on the weekly. So here are the monthly candles. I just want you to see how this wedge has corralled price in from the very beginning of the year. So we're looking for it to make a decision as to which way it wants to go out of this wedge one way or the other eventually. So I'm going to move it away. You want to note though the doji uh, for the month of July. Indecision is a doji so August is looking soft so far. Will it continue this way? Who knows? But uh, we're just going to take it day by day and see how uh, markets react to ongoing geopolitical issues and everything else. So I'm going to move it away from the uh, monthly to the one year weekly. And here's that same orange area of support, the same black line. I have not touched this line since we put it in way back here. It always amazes me. We're looking at the weekly candles here, um, how price gets corralled by those areas of resistance. And so it kissed the line here and retreated, kissed the line here and retreated, kissed the line in July and retreated. So. We drew in Tuesday's video this purple line, which is our more minor area of support. So uh, short-term area of support, medium, and longer term. So this is the one I'm going to be paying attention to in the days ahead. I want you to note that um, price is below the 8-day EMA on the weekly now, and um, that weakness seems to have continued yesterday. We're going to get a soft open today, so we'll see if if we get a weak candle again for this week or if we recover. Um, I'm going to move it away from the weekly to the daily. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that's our, our purple line. We lost that area of support yesterday. Not a super convincing candle to the downside here, although we are below that purple line of support. It had a wick and had some recovery in it during the day. I think it's worth noting. Let's take a look at um, the transports, IYT. Uh, is the ETF I use for the transports and they had a positive day yesterday and a little bit of lift. XLK which is the um, which is the uh, financials didn't do too badly as well. Uh, so this is the daily. Given the day on the Russell these guys didn't do too badly. The sector that I'm going to be paying particular attention to today and tomorrow is retail. So before we get to retail, let's look at consumer discretionary. Again, a, a candle that mostly recovered throughout the day yesterday. And 
retail. So there are a lot of uh, earnings related retail companies coming in in the days ahead. So retail, although it's below the eight day EMA, is trading in a pretty tight pattern here on the daily. So if it starts to get lift, perhaps the Russell will recover. Who knows? I'm not saying that it will, but I'm just keeping an open mind and watching carefully. So is this a real shift and are we heading into a, a more major correction? We'll find out in the days ahead. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. Just keeping a close eye. Um, so I'm going to go around. I had uh, a viewer. This is for you, V asked me to take a look at the S&P and the Dow, so I'm going to do that today. And then what I wanted to do at the end is highlight a handful of Chart of the Day Cafe past picks that are worth watching here. Should the markets recover, these look like they may tee up, and they all have beautiful value scores, wonderful growth scores, and a lot of them pay a dividend. So let's go take a look at the S&P. So here's one of the reasons why I like to refer to um, the Russell in that when you look at the S&P, so here's the Russell, we've lost that uh, we're below the eight day EMA on the weekly, but the S&P, and I'm going to use the SPY for that, is still holding up. So still for the most part on the weekly, doji doji, weakness coming in here, but not as weak as the Russell, that's for sure. So that's the S&P, here's the Dow, same thing. Uh, hasn't given it up as much as the Russell has. So uh, until these guys move below the eight-day EMA um, on the weekly chart, you know, I'm keeping an eye on on uh, price and perhaps keeping an open mind as to um, uh, price picking up here. The other thing that I wanted to show you is, uh, and again, I'm going to go back to the Russell. I hope this is not too confusing going back and forth, but... Um, the 100-day moving average has offered some support to the Russell in the last year. So I'm going to take away my drawings, hide drawn items, get a plain chart for you to see. I'm going to go back to the one-year daily, and I'm going to put in my study that shows the, um, the 50 is the blue line and the 100 is the red line. This is the Russell one-year daily chart, and what I want you to note is that the 100-day has offered support through this year. So it it offered support here, 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 and we are at the 100 here. So the gist of what I'm saying is the S&P and the Dow really haven't picked up a whole lot to the downside. Will this area offer some uh, recovery? I don't know, but keeping an eye. And again, I will be focusing on making sure that I check that retail ETF, uh, the financials and the transports. Uh, at some point before I make decisions. The, um, so that's my, my, uh, the things I wanted to pass along to you. The uh, charts that I wanted to highlight, if we do get some lift, and that's a big if, uh, three Canadians. Let's start with the Canadians uh, in Canada. Past Chart of the Day Cafe pick. I forget where we put this one forward. What I usually have a green circle on here, but Anyway, Encana um, looks interesting here. So keeping an eye on Encana for perhaps a little bit of a recovery and a lift up and over the blue. Uh, I know everyone has their own way of doing things, that, but that's what I will be looking for. Like this chart, Encana scores, check them this morning, really high value score. Forecasted earnings growth rate going forward, sorry about that, of um, 34% and a dividend yield of one point, or sorry, a dividend yield of 0.61. The next one is Barrick Gold, which we put forward somewhere. Actually, if it would help if I put my drawings back in, that's that's a problem. So ECA, sorry, I'm going to go back to that one. Yeah, we put it forward here, green circle. Um, like the way it's looking here, should we get a recovery in Canada's interesting. Uh, Barrett Gold, we put it forward here thinking it might lift, it walked around, but it's trading, it's sort of consolidated here, it's trading up and over this area of support. And uh, Barrett Gold looks interesting on a move up and over the 8-day EMA. Checked the scores on it this morning, nice high value score, forecasted earnings growth rate going forward of 38%, that's a, that's a really wow number, and a current dividend yield of 
0.9%. And the last Canadian, Suncor Energy, we put it forward here. This is my long-term trend line, thought it would bounce. It had a little more weakness after that, but then picked up and went zoom. Suncor is looking kind of interesting here, to me at least. Uh, if it has a solid candle and starts to pick up, uh, I would be taking a look at it. It has a really nice value score. Forecasted earnings growth rate going forward of 36% and a current dividend yield of 2.46. Now the uh, uh, the U.S. listed NetEase was one, but I noticed in pre-market it is down. So maybe they announced earnings, but I like the look of this candle um, without that pre-market data. So I will be keeping an eye on NetEase in the next couple of days. The score on NetEase is really high for value. Forecasted earnings growth rate of 23% and a dividend yield of 1.37. Um, but watch that pre-market action. I'm not sure what's going on there. And eBay. We mentioned eBay a long time ago, but I reiterated in my chart of the day eBay here. It's had a nice lift up and over this area that is now uh, support. I like the way it's behaving here. It looks as though, should things recover, eBay might start to get some lift here and move up and over the blue. eBay, nice high value score, forecasted earnings growth rate going forward of 13%, no dividend yield. And finally, ILMN, Illumina. We put Illumina forward here. Um, a lot of you might not be familiar with it. It's a um, it's a human genome uh, biotech company, but it's one of the big ones. Uh, so Illumina is one a company that I think we should all be aware of. It was sitting here at this area of support. It walked around, uh, deciding where to go. Earnings came out, and boom, Illumina had a nice run. It's consolidating, consolidating again here. If the markets recover, I would look for Illumina to move up and over this area. So consolidating, I'd wait for that move, but um, scores on it, nice value score, forecasted earnings growth rate of 20% and no dividend. So those are ones to keep an eye on. With that, I'll leave you. I apologize for the longer video. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the days to come. Uh, have a great weekend. We'll put our next video out on Tuesday. Thanks for watching.